with that? Yeah. Um, you know, basically started my entrepreneurial journey in, in high school. Always knew that like the traditional school route wasn't for me, corporate route. And uh, kind of had different e-commerce businesses, just fell, in, fell into my lap in, in high school and in college. And then leaving college, came up with the idea to start movement and, um, you know, look to crowdfunding because I didn't know how to raise money or do anything like that. So we went, crowdfunded it. Um, and I wasn't in school and college to so spend a lot of time just focused on crowdfunding and e-commerce and Facebook and Twitter and all that shit. And, and uh, yeah, first year we were able to do a million dollars, never raise any capital and kind of year after that did seven and 30, then 50, all the way up to like 75, 80. And then uh, we sold in 2018 to Movado um, for a hundred million. And, um, and then yeah, I st stuck around with them for a while as well. So that's beast. That's beast. And I think what gets lost in that story is the time frame of what you did it. Uh, I always say Jake deserves a lot of respect, as I, as people say, because you know he was really DDC 1.0. There really wasn't like a big brother at the time uh, of, of of another brand where there was a playbook. You know, I, I believe Movement was part of that initial playbook uh, before you know all, you know all the brands you see today. What, what was it like starting and launching like on the Kickstarter? And do you think that's still relevant for people today? Yeah, I mean, back then it was it was great because you saw a lot of um, honestly shitty products go on to Kickstarter and get funded that clearly didn't. I mean, Coolest Cooler was one of them. I think mm -hmm. did like 12 million. I don't even know if that got out of production, initial production. Wow. So people just lost money because there's just products that didn't they didn't know how to execute. So for us, we knew that, OK, um, we could get the money. The audience was there. Um, but what we didn't know is just like how to do everything afterwards. But mm -hmm. we were able to produce the watches, found a reputable, reputable manufacturer, and then ran, ran from there. In terms of today, like, you know, if I was starting movement today, it's obviously there's, there's too, it's too saturated. But if I wanted to start a product today and needed capital, it's like, it, I don't know why you wouldn't potentially start on crowdfunding. Like it's not, I don't hear about it as much. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's a reason why it's not where I'm looking anymore, but I also think it's easier to get funding from angels. I think there's just more younger, mm -hmm. uh, younger people with money, whether it's, you know, crypto or it's successful e-commerce entrepreneurs who are looking to invest. Like and maybe we're just in an LA bubble, but, um, I know a lot of people who are getting angel money, uh, all around the United States and totally. I've gotten DMS and have invested and I've seen influencers are investing. I have friends that are, you know, on bachelor and bachelorette who are investing. So <laughs> I feel like that's a route to go, if not the crowdfunding route. Definitely. And what I love about crowdfunding is, uh, if you just launched a website, getting just your close immediate friends to buy within the first month would be hard because they may, they say they may, they would probably say, Hey, I'll do it. But there wouldn't be an, a time bound urgency for them to actually press go and buy. So at the very least Kickstarter or Indiegogo, like you did, uh, will get people to buy and create urgency for them to buy. And you know, it's a good way to launch a product.